I'm ready to go. The message for today is faith for reproach. Faith for reproach. <laughs> That's not easy, right? Faith for reproach. You know, we, we talk about faith normally in the church as if faith is only for getting, as if faith is only for receiving. We talk about faith most of the time um, as if faith is only for getting. First of all, we use faith to receive our salvation. We use faith, we use faith to receive our, um, you know, we just talk of faith as if that's what we use to, re to receive blessings on there. But it is important for us to be taught and it is important for the pastors to teach uh, that faith, there, is different aspects to, there are different aspects to faith. When we talk about faith, it is the responsibility of pastors and ministers to teach people faith in all varieties of it and to teach faith in all ways that the Bible teaches it, to teach faith with the full picture of the Bible. And uh, for, so to make faith biblical, we've got to teach it in all ramification as God has presented it. But often we teach people that faith is only what we use to do miracles, or get healing, get miracles, or to receive some blessings or the other from God. As if that's just the only thing faith is meant for, to receive some form of blessing or the other from God. So, but people use Hebrews 11 verse 6 as that without faith we cannot please God. And uh, yes, without faith you cannot please God. So even though without faith we cannot please God, even though without faith we cannot please God, however, uh, when you talk, when you look in this in this chapter of Hebrews chapter eleven, you will see that there are different kinds of faith. There are different use of faith. There are different usage of faith, and uh, faith is used in different uh, circumstances, different situations, and different things happen with faith. So faith actually should be applied and could be applied to every aspect of human endeavor. Faith can be applied and should be applied to every areas of human life. So that is why the chapter uh, 11 of Hebrews, Hebrews enumerates the whole life, you know, the whole different aspect of life, diverse feet and um, you know, victories, testimonies that faith brought to people in all dimensions, in all areas of life. People use faith to conquer, to battle, to win the victory in different areas of their lives. And they accomplish different uh, uh, feats by faith. And this is not just in receiving something, but actually it takes greater faith to be able to reject something. And uh, the one I'm going to talk about today, the faith I'm going to talk about today is the faith that rather had the courage to reject and to say no to things. Uh, the faith that had the power and that gives you the power to reject even the things that are your benefit. Faith to say no to things that rightfully belong to you. Faith to be able to uh, reject the blessings and embrace suffering, faith that will, that will empower you to embrace reproach, faith that will empower you to, uh, to uh, accept pain and to accept suffering. Now, this kind of faith is what people don't talk about often. This kind of faith, you don't normally meet it. You don't even know that faith could be used to suffer and that faith, that suffering you know, is you know, a dimension for Christians, a dimension of faith. And some people actually die in faith. So we, you, you might, we might use faith also for death. We, might, we could use faith for suffering. We could use faith for reproach. 
and we could use faith to to suffer. And let's read from the, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, 22, no, let's say, no, 24, Hebrews 11, 24, Hebrews 11, 24, it says, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the daughter of Pharaoh's, I mean, the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. When he came of age, that is by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused the privilege. Can you imagine somebody having the state status of a prince in the land? And that is like, you know, hair apparent. He was supposed to be the king the after, after that. He was supposed to be the hair apparent because the the reigning king only had a daughter, and that daughter uh, didn't have children, so the only child that daughter had was uh, Moses. So Moses stood a very good chance of becoming the leader and the ruler of the republic, of the country, of the nation. He stood a good chance of becoming the next pharaoh. But when he began to walk with God, Moses began to exercise his faith and this is faith and he knows that for him to be able to reject his position as the as the prince for him to be able to reject the choice of uh, the pharaoh's daughter because she shows him to be his son to be her son and for him to be able to say no to her and be able to walk away that opens her up uh, that opens him up to all kinds of danger and that opens him definitely up to you know persecution from the palace from the king's uh, family from, from the king himself and from the military and the security services of egypt so this takes faith you know sometimes we think as believers that if we have faith and if we have faith enough that only good things should be happening to us we think that since we have faith and we believe in god that uh, you know, bad things should never happen. That negative things should never happen. But it's not true. It's not true. In fact, that, as a matter of fact, that is why we're having faith. Faith to be able to go through difficulties. Faith to be able to pass through hard times. Faith that will see us through. To be able to thrive when other people are dying in uh, in in uh, in complaints and in uh, in tears and in self condemnation. So faith is much more deeper. Faith has so many more varieties than just, you know, believing God for salvation or believing, believing God for blessing. Faith uh, gives us the ability to be able to make difficult decisions, make difficult and hard decisions. So, and really only people of faith are capable of making this kind of decision. Only people of faith are capable of facing challenges head on. Only people of faith are capable of exposing themselves to, you know, you know, imminent danger and, and still do that, you know, head on. Only people of faith are able to say, yes, be it, let it be, let anything that will be, will be, you know, be it what may be. And that they are ready to suffer, you know, the consequences. You need a lot of faith for that. You see, everybody can have faith to be blessed. Everybody can have faith to receive. But faith to let go. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of faith we are talking about. Can you, can you imagine it? Faith to let go. Faith to let go. Uh, someone just wrote that Stephen in the Bible, you know, was full of faith. And because he was full of faith, he went to death. And he allowed people to stone him. He willingly gave himself up. And they stoned him to death. And many people in the, in the, in the, in the beginning, first years of Christianity, the first few years of Christianity, many people were like this. Many people uh, actually went to death, to take death voluntarily. Many people went to submit themselves to rather die than to, be, to compromise their faith. And that means faith. That is faith. So how do you have that kind of faith is the thing we are going to talk about today. How do you have the faith that will allow you to let loose 
and to let go of something? How do you have the faith that will allow you to even reject and refuse what rightfully belongs to you? How do you have that kind of faith that will enable you to say this is suffering and to go and receive suffering and accept suffering voluntarily? How do you have that kind of faith? How does it work? Well, to accept reproach, to rather choose reproach than to choose good life. How do you accept that kind of faith? How do you demonstrate that kind of faith? You see, unfortunately, the kind of faith that we all have been taught is the kind of faith that would rather compromise. The kind of faith that would rather have an excuse for compromising. And sometimes some people even preach faith in such a way as if if it is God, it's going to be good. As if if it is God, it would do, you will not suffer. If it is God, you will not suffer reproach. If it is God, we will not suffer loss. If it is God, we will not never suffer uh, something some difficulties. <laughs> but this doesn't match up with what we see in the Bible. Everybody in the Bible suffered difficulties. Even Jesus, our Lord, suffered difficulties. I mean, he died by hanging. <laughs> that was suffering for first time. I mean, you know, first class suffering. Um, you know, the apostles, Apostle Paul, and all of them, they suffered a great deal. So we all must be taught to have this kind of faith and to be able to, you know, to be able to, you know, learn to use faith to endure something. Wow, Reverend Great Abraham is saying, Sir, this message is for me. I was contemplating suicide when I just came in contact with your message. Wow, amazing, amazing. Pastor Abraham, uh, Reverend Great Abraham, I want to tell you that, you know, God has something, just like your name has suggested, God has something even greater waiting for you. God has something greater waiting for you. And Abraham, that's your name too. Abraham contemplated suicide also. Abraham contemplated suicide. And many men of God in the Bible contemplated suicide. Uh, you know, a lot of situations in life will get you to that place where you might need to come contemplate suicide. And, um, and so, you know, you know, you are in a good company. And thank God that God brought you here today. Uh, you know, things could go on in life. And the big difficult thing about that is that when people don't understand you, people who are uh, around you, when you know they would rather condemn you or judge you for what you are feeling, uh, you know. But you know this this the, by the fact the fact that God brought you across me, uh, I bet you I, I can guarantee you that it's, it means that God is putting you in a safe hand. God is putting you in a safe hand. And God is about to turn your life around. I will encourage you to go, um, you know, to go to my blog, sundayadelajablog.com, sundayadelajablog.com. And, uh, you know, look for a, the, a lot of other recordings, recorded messages like this. And, uh, you know, go and look, listen to them. Or uh, even on this same platform, Facebook platform. You could go to YouTube, it's right here on the, where, where you go to select photographs or whatever, biographic photographs or that. So you, you can choose uh, to listen to many of my other messages as well. So this, this message is for you. You see, the, the, the message is about using our faith to even overcome uh, terrible feelings like the urge to, to die or to go and commit suicide. Uh, faith faith uh, is not just for the good things of life faith is not just for the goodies faith is also needed in difficult situations in difficult circumstances and especially when you are facing such a pressure like you are facing death So, it takes faith to say no to something. It takes a lot of faith to say no. Especially to a thought like suicide, it's difficult to say no to that thought. So, um, but here in this particular situation that we are reading, Moses had everything. 
He had everything going on with him. He had everything going on for him. And for him to now come back home as, you know, just imagine the thought that are coming to his mind. How can I ever reject this? How can I ever, if I reject this, they will kill me. If I reject this, they will persecute me. If I reject this, they will come after me. If I reject this, 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 and this could happen to me. You know, so all kind of thoughts are coming to his mind. So, uh, and he was able to say no. He was able to say no and to, to the privileged position that he had. And he was able to go against the risk and uh, confront the risk and risk everything for him to obey God and to follow the calling of God upon his life. And, uh, and, and uh, that's not easy. So the question I have for you today, everybody that is watching this is, how much faith do you have in God? How much trust do you have in God to be able to say no to good things of life? How much faith do you have in God to be able to reject the blessings of life? You see, um, even pastors these days are finding it difficult to reject the goodies of life. You know, we, these pastors are the pastors who teach, uh, they teach a lot about faith, 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 faith. But unfortunately, most pastors only teach about faith in terms of, uh, in terms of salvation and faith in terms of blessings. So they teach faith uh, uh, in terms of that, you know, they can receive something, receive something. But even the pastors don't have the faith to reject. Uh, I heard of a situation in Nigeria when a pastor uh, said it was it was given, um, it was given. You know, there, there is a there is a man, a man that went to steal maybe one 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 million dollars or two million dollars from a from his company. It was, it was, uh, he went to steal a million dollars from his company or more than that. Maybe a bigger, a large amount of money from Sheraton Hotel or somewhere where I was working. And, um, and, you know, this person was caught because he took the money to the church. He said he was, he was having pressure to give offering in the church. So he took this money to the church and so he was caught. He was caught uh, and the police caught him and he confessed even it was in the national newspaper in Nigeria, that in the money, he gave it to the church. And when the, the church was confronted, the church was, you know, the church had found it difficult to return the money. The church didn't return the money. The church was saying that, well, he has given it, he has given it. <laughs> the church didn't the money. And, and maybe the church has used the money that time. So it's not easy even for the church to, the church knowing that this is a stolen money, this is a criminal money, and uh, that was given to as offering the church a large amount of money that is stolen from another company, that is stolen from another man's business. And even this has come out <laughs> uh, into the open. This has come out into the open. And, you know, everybody was also talking about it. The whole country was talking about it. But the church sat on that money, refused to, to give me the money back. <laughs> Why? Because it is not easy to say no to good things. It is not easy to say no to good things. <laughs> and so, so it, they said they had given it, they had given it to, to, to the church, and so we cannot give it back. <laughs> another, another, another situation... Um, in Nigeria, a pastor, a pastor, uh, how do you say it? Um, a pastor, a pastor's so-called plane, a pastor's plane was, uh, was caught in South Africa carrying $9, nine million or something, $9 million, a lot of money. And then they found out that this, this plane was going to South Africa to go, to, to buy arms, to buy arms. <laughs> so it was a, a whole big mess. It was a whole big mess, a, a whole big scandal in the country. And, you know, and everybody say, okay, where did the pastor get the jet from in the first place? And you know, why should the pastor give his jet out to somebody who's going to buy arms with it? Arm dealers and things like that. 
He's not well because a lot of these things, you know, they are difficult for pastors even to resist the temptation. It's difficult for pastors to resist the temptations. And we don't know, maybe, of course, the pastor might not know that they were, they were dealing in arms, maybe. Or maybe he didn't know that they were, this play, plane was carrying all those uh, money. But, you know, the thing I'm saying is that even for the pastor to say, you know, no. You know, in Nigeria now, there are a lot of uh, complaints and a lot of uh, Christians who are not happy because they are saying, okay, all these pastors are saying, somebody gave me. That pastor said, somebody dashed me the plane. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure the pastor didn't have the faith to say no. You know, that's, everybody is, you know, everybody have faith to receive, but not, not too many pastors or not too many people preach about the faith to reject, the faith to say no. So it takes a greater degree of faith to say no than to receive. It takes a greater degree of faith to reject a plan than to receive it. You know, you will not believe this, but somebody actually offered me a plane myself. I was offered a plane 10 years ago. I was given, actually, given a plane 10 years ago. And thank God, God gave me enough sense, enough common sense to refuse it. Uh, God gave me enough common sense to receive, to refuse it. So I was given a plane, but I didn't take it. I didn't take it. Uh, so it takes, in, you know, it takes a lot of faith to be able to say no. But in my own case, the reason why I, re I rejected the plane was not because I had so much faith, I think. I think I rejected the plane, the plane just by pure common sense. <laughs> I would rather, you know, I would rather walk and make my own money, you know, and when I'm in the place to be able to not just fly a plane or private plane, but to be able to <laughs> sustain the plane before I could, I must have enough money to buy that plane, you know, uh, to fly maybe with a thousand planes like that. And I must have done so much good with 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 uh, with equivalent amount of money to ordinary people. I must have, you know, eradicated so much poverty in my society before I will use that money to buy a plane. And if I buy the plane, it means I have sufficient and excess money to to be able to you know take care of it. But I don't think it's wise for me to buy a plane. I think. Uh, you know, I would rather if I would rather set up a business. You know, it's something as if your business owns a plane, and then you are using it. If you have a business, okay, let's say the pastor has a company, he has his own business that is running, and the business is so prosperous, and that the business now, you know, has uh, that the business now buys for the operations and for the you know for the running of the business is one thing so because you are a manager or you are a director in the business and then you are using the plane to so that might be uh that might be acceptable but you know in america last year or two years ago there was uh, an american pastor you know that had also a scandal a big name that we all know the name because they said they were charging uh the members of the church you know, doing offering for his plane. His plane was going to cost sixty-five million dollars. Sixty-five million dollars. He wanted to change the plane and buy a new one, a more sophisticated plane for sixty-five million dollars. So all the members of the church, either they were charged or they denied it that they were not charged that it was a, uh, it was a free offering. But can you imagine? A pastor cannot even resist that temptation to use the offering of the church to use the money for or to charge his members of the church to. Uh, to, to, to do offering for to buy plane because it's not easy. It takes greater faith to say no than to accept something. It takes greater faith to reject a blessing. You know, all those blessings people are saying, seed blessings, some of them are supposed to be rejected. A lot of those offerings and the prophet offering and all those breakthrough offering and even all the tithes, some of, some of the tithes and offering that, that were being given in churches, a lot of them are coming from drugs. A lot of them are coming from illicit business, illicit, uh, unlawful, illicit business and, and, you know, and relationships. So, and yet, uh, people, are, people are taking those, you know, people are using those things. And uh, it's a pity. It's a pity that people will, uh, it's a pity that people will, uh, yeah, it's just a pity that people will, um, you know, will not even ask about the source of the money. And people will not even be able to say no. I, there was a story I heard about 
Uh, I'm actually, it's not just a story. I read it. But this guy actually wrote it <laughs> on his Facebook page. Uh, he went to Atlanta to see one of the big pastors there. And, you know, he said, you know, I'm a pastor from, he's a Nigerian himself, and, uh, but he lives in America. So he said, I come to see Pastor so 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 I want him to pray for me and bless me uh, for, you know, I'm a pastor, please, I want to see him. They say, oh, well, uh, you need to write, uh, register and, <laughs> you know, for two weeks or three weeks or, you know, two months. Or you need to, you know, you know, get registration. You need to, whatever, protocol, follow the protocol. And the protocol says uh, you have to have registered two months or three months before. And so, uh, so the pastor cannot see you. So then on this, about, when he was about to go, he told them, well, I also brought a $40,000 offering for the pastor, a blessing to the church. You know, I just wanted to bless the pastor and let the pastor pray for me. They said, oh, oh, oh okay, okay, just a minute. <laughs> just a minute, I will inform him. Maybe he will be able to receive you. <laughs> this, is talking, this is happening in America. So this pastor, well, as soon as they informed this pastor <laughs> and told him about the forty thousand offering, forty thousand dollar offering that they were going to give to him, he said, "Ah, okay, for God, ah, no, 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 no. Why should I be? Let him come, let him come, let him come." <laughs> let him come, let him come, let him come. No, 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 no. We have all the time. How many, how many, how many hours does he need? Let's get. <laughs> Let's, let, let me take him to the rest. Tell him that I'll be ready to take him to the restaurant. <laughs> faith to reject, to say no to blessings, and faith to be able to accept reproach if necessary. Faith to say no. Faith to be able to reject blessings. Faith to be able to say no to good things. Faith to be able to say to 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 say no to to even you know great things like money, faith to be able to say no to even great offerings, faith to be able to say no to even planes when you are being given, faith to be able to say no to so-called blessings that might become a cause eventually. I uh, I <laughs> I know of for a fact. Uh, about another situation right now in Nigeria, you know, this is true because there are members of the church in that church uh, who are saying this. Uh, you know, so there is, there is this pastor that um, either he bought the plane or he said, he claims that they gave him. Okay, let's say he, gave, he was given. So this pastor said he was given the plane. But he didn't know that for you to maintain a plane, you need a lot of money. You know, packing a lot just to get your plane packed. You might spend up to $50,000 a day. Minimum of $20,000 a day just to pay for the packing of the, to pack, to pack the, 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 the place where you pack your car, I mean your plane. So just to maintain and pack the plane, you need to, maybe minimum $20,000 every day just to pay for the car. And for the maintenance of a plane, you need nothing less than a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars every month just to maintain the plane. So what this pastor did, so they have all kinds of offering in their church. You know, they have the Titan offering, then they have offering for building, they have offering for mission or some missions or whatever, and then they have <laughs> they have offering to maintain the 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 <laughs> <laughs> to maintain the plane of the pastor. So members of the church are now being charged to maintain the plane. The planes, actually, of the pastor. So then the, 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 the pastor was confronted and said, no, you are not charged, but you are just, it just included there. So you choose whatever you want to give your offering to, either to tight an offering or to the building or to the maintenance of the plane. Of the past. So every month, these pastors are putting so much pressure on their members 
uh, on their, you know, they are pushing their members because of new project, new project, new project, and a new project every day. And, uh, you know, new plane, new project, new status, new university, new this, new that. And people are forced to give, to give and keep on giving. And, but that's because we, can, we couldn't em, uh, uh, embrace and we couldn't say no to good things like Moses did. Moses was able to say no to good things. Moses was able to reject good things. Moses, Moses was able to say no to the blessing, to the blessing that he was receiving from the house of uh, Pharaoh. He was able to receive an inheritance. He was able to refuse that inheritance to become the heir, uh, the heir apparent, apparent of uh, Egypt. He was able to say no to the blessing of possibly becoming the next Pharaoh. He was able to say no to all the goodies and the good life that are coming from, from Egypt, that are coming from Egypt. So this was somebody who didn't know Jesus so much like we are. That like like I mean like we do because there was no Jesus that time. This was somebody that was just a young lad, a young man growing up, and he was able to say no to a strong urge of blessing. Can you imagine what kind of church we have today? Can you imagine if you know we, it has been uh, Christians today? I mean, in the in the last administration in Nigerian government of uh, Jonathan, you know, are Christians were well, many of the people who are who looted the country are Christians. Many of the people who looted the country are Christian. And why were they looting the country? Because the churches have not preached on the faith to say no, the faith to reject, the faith to really resist the, the good life, if that good life is in conflict with the, with the, with the, with the will of God, if, that, uh, if those goodies are in conflict with the will of God. So that is the kind of, that takes faith. That takes faith as well. So it is faith. It takes faith to be able to say no and to be able to reject what whatever uh, you are being offered, whatever you are being offered. And that's why many people cannot reject bribes, and that's why many people cannot reject corruption because you cannot. They don't have faith enough to say no. They cannot reject and refuse the 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 goodies of Pharaoh, the goodies of Pharaoh. And so he was able to. I mean, he just uh, he was able to do that. He was able to do that. So it's not easy. We think it's easy, but when you are being offered a, a million dollars or five million dollars, ten million dollars, and for nothing, just out of the blue, when some some church members are bringing you millions of dollars in your in in uh, in offering, you know, it's it's not easy. It's not easy to say no. It's not easy to reject. You know, you get to that. You, I, I don't think we should judge people, but you know, we should just teach it and say. Uh, you know, we should develop ourselves. We should work on ourselves. We, we should work on ourselves so that when we get to that place, we will not repeat the same mistake. We will not fall flat on our face on that, that same temptation, on that same, that same pressure. So, but, uh, you know, you need grace for that as well. We need grace. We need grace to be able to refuse. All right, so, well, you know, so these kind of things happen. And, but what we see in the life of Moses here is that Moses was able to, by faith, you know, just walk out of the Pharaoh's palace. By faith, he was able to walk out of Pharaoh's palace. So he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to be called the son. And you know why most people are not able to reject uh, the goodies and the blessings that are coming, the offerings that are not clean, the jets that are all, all kind of things that are not proper. Why is it that pe people, uh, even pastors, are not able to say no to these things? Mostly because they are afraid of poverty. Many people are afraid of poverty. The reason why many people compromise and they, you know, commit all kind of atrocities, atrocities, even though they are they are they are Christians is because they are afraid of living in poverty. Many people don't want to live in poverty. So Moses also had that temptation. He could have said, oh, wow, if I, if I get out of this palace now, you know, where will I, how will I live? And uh, maybe I will become homeless. Maybe I will become poor. Maybe I will become, you know, a uh, 
refugee, a, a fugitive. I will be, you know, homeless and I will not have anything to leave. Nobody will help me. It is that fear of being, you no, know, of, of poverty sometimes. It is that fear of be, becoming a, 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 a fugitive, fugitive that is making people to go into all kinds of compromises. I mean, you know, people cannot say no to the temptation of, you know, being in the elite, in the league. I know another pastor in Nigeria that started the university. And, uh, you know, I asked him directly, but I know that you don't even have money for your church building yet. I mean, your university will cost like 100 times what your church building will cost. You've not even built your church a building, and you want to, uh, you want to go and, <laughs> and build a university. And he told me, point blank, he told me, and he said, you know what, all my friends, all my colleagues have a university now. This one has two universities. This one have one. This one have one. This one have one. This one have one. That is my colleague. We are all on the same. We all started together. We are all on the same league. And if I don't start a university, I will lose the respect of these my of these my friends. So he started charging his members. Started charging them. Oh, the Lord has spoken. The Lord has spoken. We, we should do it. People are not have because he is afraid of the reproach. And the shame of him not mashing up with his colleagues, with his friends who are in the ministry with him. He wants to be on the same platform, on the same, uh, on the same level at, at par with his friends, with his friends. He couldn't say no. He couldn't say no. He couldn't say no. And, and uh, so he had to go and start a university and he couldn't finish it. He couldn't finish it because the, 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 all the church members couldn't come up with that money, that kind of money. So, you know, there is another pressure, which is the pressure from the society, the pressure from, from your peers, the pressure from your friends. You want to be counted. You know, we are afraid of reproach sometimes. The pressure of reproach, the fear of reproach is making us to do things that, you know, that are not the will of God, that don't make sense. The fear of reproach. We don't want to suffer reproach. So that is why I'm talking about this message today. It takes faith to have reproach. Even to say no, to say no to good things means to confront, to come face to face with reproach, to come face to face with poverty, to come face to face with ridicule. That takes faith. That takes faith. That takes faith. So now, how do you go through this situation? How do you confront this kind of situation? How do you have that kind of faith? That's what I want to talk about today. And I want to give you the keys. How do you have this kind of faith? Number one, remember that faith is always the expectation of something that is invisible. So, for you to be able to endure reproach, to have faith to, have repro to, to endure reproach, it means, number one, you have to learn to see into the invisible. And to you, the invisible reality has to be stronger than the visible realities. So the visible reality that Moses was having was the palace, the her inheritance, the prospect of becoming a, uh, a, a pharaoh, the prospect of you know becoming a heir, a heir of the of the throne, and the pro the prospect of having all the goodies. But all those things, if you remember, all those things are. External things, all those things are physical things, you see. So the only person who will be able to reject uh, uh, good things and say no to the good things and be able to embrace reproach must have seen something beyond the physical. You must have seen something beyond the physical. So faith is the, is, is the substance of things hoped for. You know, hope is not visible. You don't see hope. Hope is in, the, in another dimension. Hope is in the dimension of uh, invisibility is in the dimension of 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 uh, of the spirit. So you must be able to see. Any time you have hope, I mean, you have faith. Faith is always dealing with the dimension of invisibility. Faith is always dealing with the invisible dimension. Faith is always dealing with future, but future that is not yet clearly visible yet. It might be visible in your mind, but it's not tangible. It's not physically visible. So faith is the ability to look forward 
into the spirit realm, into something that is not yet clear, into something that is not yet visible to others, into something that nobody else is saying. But you attach your faith. You attach yourself to that invisible thing in front of you. You attach yourself. You put your trust into that thing that is invisible yet, but that you connect yourself into and begin to make actions today, producing evidence, producing substance for that thing that you have not seen. You commit yourself to the un 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 invisible reality. You commit yourself to invisible, you no, know, you no know, reality, the, which is you know, uh, which is on, in God's mind or. In the in the in the heavenless, or which is you know more which which is more correct, which is the right thing to do. So that is one way for you to be able to say no. When you now see that that spirit realm, that you know reality that you are seeing in front of you in the spirit is convincing to you when it is becoming dominant in your in your heart you know that you can't see it with your eyes but in your heart you can see it in your mind in your spirit eye you can see that you know there is a future for me there is a better promise for me there is the faithfulness of God waiting for me there is another de destiny waiting for me there is a better future waiting for me I don't know why I don't know how but I'm seeing I, I believe it I can feel it I can sense it there is something so there are ability to attach yourself to that thing you are sensing. The ability to be able to attach yourself to that to that invisible reality that is in front of you in the future there. That is the thing that will give you the grace now and that will give you the power to be able to say no, to reject all the good things that you are saying, but the good things, even though they are good things, but they are, they are physical things. They are already visible. So that's number one. Number two, Way the, the number two way to have the, the kind of faith for approach is you must be aware of the fact that everything that is already visible, everything that is already tangible, everything that is already physical, material, your house, your wife, your children, your 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 church, your plane, your car, your you know your your property, your country, everything that you can see visibly, even your own life, everything that is you can see vi visibly is temporal. Everything that can be seen is temporal. Everything visible. So you must be convinced in your mind that all these blessings, all these palace, all this throne, all this ability to be able to become uh, a, a, a uh, to be to become uh, a pharaoh, to be a heir to the throne, all these blessings, all these goodies that are coming, they are already here. And if they are here, they are temporal. There must be something out there in the spirit. That is the eyes of faith. That's what the faith is saying now. Faith doesn't live or thrive on things that are temporal. Faith will not attach itself to something that are visible. Faith will not be living only depending on the things that are already here, already visible and tangible and physical. Faith will not live by the things that are already in the now. Faith always deals with the things that are not yet visible, that are not yet tangible, that are not yet concrete, Faith is always dealing with the future and is working in from the future, from the is working now, bringing the future to pass. That is the life that is interesting for a man of faith. I am not interested in what is already obtainable. I am working today towards something that is invisible, towards something that is not visible. That thing that is not visible that I am seeing in my spirit eye is greater than all the physical things that I'm seeing right now. That invisible reality, that thing that is still in the spirit that I need to break forward into this realm of reality is greater than all the physical things we're already saying. So that is the ability and that is the kind of thing that gives you the grace to say no. So if you have this understanding that to live in faith, is, in, to live by faith is to live by the invisible reality of the future that you are bringing to pass and you are not just hoping for it in the future but you are producing evidence now. You are working towards bringing it to pass right now. You are producing substance, working to make it sure that that thing you are seeing in the spirit that you are bringing it to pass. That reality, it, that reality of the invisible and the superiority of the invisible things, things that are not seen over things that are seen, is the 
Faith is the thing that gives you the ability and the grace to say no to the things that you are already saying. To the things that you are already saying. So in the case of Pharaoh, in the case of the, uh, Moses, Moses was able to look into the future by faith that I want to be a deliverer of my people. It was, you know, that is greater to him than being on the throne of Pharaoh. I want to be, I want to see myself. That's why he went to physically actually kill a, an Egyptian. And because he was, he, to him, being a deliverer with God, being, you know, it was a more glory for him to suffer with the people of God, but to see something, to, to align himself with the people of God and the blessings of God, they, they, to be on the side of God is much more important to him than to, to, to enjoy the, 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 the blessings of Pharaoh's family, of Pharaoh's house. So I'm going to give you the next point, but before I do that, if you have not yet uh, get, gotten a copy of this message, you can do that. The way to get a copy of this message is simply to press your share button. Go look for your share button. The share button should be under this video or around this video. Go look for the share button. Press that share button right now. Once you press the share button, the, a copy of this message will come over to you. A copy of this message will come to your timeline. So for you to get a copy of this message, press the share button. Press that share button now and the copy of this message will come over to you. So how do you say no to good things of life? by seeing and align yourself with the future with something invisible ahead of time how do you say no to to you know how do you say no to comfort and embrace discomfort you must be able to see something greater ahead how do you em embrace reproach and disgrace and humiliation you must be able to see something ahead you know in, in Ukraine, for, for, for you people to have, you people are, are hearing the name Pastor Sunday and you are listening to me now, you cannot even imagine how much reproach I've needed to suffer, how much disgrace, how much reproach. But, you know, you must have the faith to confront reproach. You must have the faith to confront disgrace. You know, people, especially if you look, if you put my name, Sunday Adelaja, in the Google, and search it, you'll see all kinds of stories. Even in, in, on YouTube, if you put my name on YouTube and you put and you, you know you look in the, there, you will see all kind of stories, all kind of horrible things that are said that are made up about, about me. All kind of allegations, all kind of stories, all kind of things. And you know what? I am just walking through them. I'm just walking through the reproach. I'm just walking through the disgrace. I'm just walking through the allegations. I'm just walking through the false allegations. I'm just doing what I need to do. That takes faith. Why? Because I'm not living by what they are living by. They are living by what, you know, what is physical, what they are talking about. Now. They are living in the now. I am living in the future. They are living in the, in the physical realm, in the, in, the, in the world of flesh and blood. They are living in the world of the, the canal, but I am living in the world of the spirit. So the ability to be able to embrace reproach and embrace shame and be able to, you know, embrace, embrace even, you know, your suffering and even death is the ability to see beyond, is the ability to look in the spirit and see something and see something that other people are not seeing and align yourself with that thing that other people are not saying and that is your victory and you walk for that for that and you live for that and all that can you imagine that when i told people in africa that i am i am leaving ukraine people say what will happen to your church people say what will happen to your church but you have worked and built that church for 20 years how can you give away that church that you have built for 20 years? How can you give away that church? So people are thinking that the church in Ukraine it is, 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 is my identity. People are thinking that what I have now is my wealth. People are thinking that my wealth is the amount of people I have, all this crowd, all these white people, all these Ukrainians and Russians that are coming to listen to me, the building that we have that is costing you know, millions of dollars at the house that I have here that's costing millions of dollars, the crowd that is all around me that is, you know, how can you leave all that? How can you leave all that? <laughs> but I'm seeing something 
In my case, I'm seeing something in the future. What am I seeing? I'm seeing the continent of Africa. I don't have anything there yet. I don't even have a house in Africa. I don't even have an apartment in Africa. I don't even have a car in Africa. I don't even have anything there. I don't even have, you know, a church in Africa. But I can already see my spirit. I'm seeing in the future. What, what is here in Ukraine is already here. I already did this. I already proved that. I already have it. But how can you leave it? Why should you leave it? Why should you leave it? Everybody, even every week, somebody tells me, Pastor, who will you put there? Pastor, how will you control what's going on? Pastor, how will you we will control? I don't want to control anything. Once I leave, I give everything out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. I just say bye. I don't care. Let they, I've taught them for 20 years, let them, let, them, let, let, let them maintain the church, let them maintain the ministry, let them, I've taught them, I've given my best to them. This is something that is already in the past. Anything that you see, anything that you can see, anything that is physical is already in the past. We don't live, we shouldn't be living by things that are already existing. We should be living by things that don't exist yet. We should be living by things that are invisible here. That's why I say the just shall live by faith. Living by faith is living by the things that are not yet visible. Because the things that are visible, they are no more faith. They are already fact. But the things that are not yet visible, that is living by faith. So they said, but pastor, you are going to Africa with nothing? With just by yourself, just coming? Yes, I am I, I'm coming with people, but I'm still sustaining those people. I'm the one to sustain them. I'm the one to pay for their, you know, for their for their maintenance over there. I'm the one still spending to sustain people over there. And how do you know if, if they said, oh, supposing things don't work out? Faith. The faith that things will work out that I have. The faith that I have is greater than the fear that I have. I have developed my faith. I am leaning on my staff. I am leaning on my, you know, the Bible say the staff and uh, and whatever the staff and his staff and something they comfort him, right? The the staff and uh, rod, thy staff and thy rod, they comfort me because I have a staff and rod in my hand. I have a staff and rod. What you know, I told you yesterday. What does a staff and a rod means? The staff and the rod is the history of God's victory on my behalf. The staff and the rod is the victory. Uh, is the history, the documentation of all the great things God has done. Is the staff and the rod is like my is like my bear and lion that God has already won for me. The bear has been overcome. The lion has been overcome. I have the staff with me. I have the staff and the rod. I have the staff and the rod telling me the stories of faith. And besides the star, I mean the rod and the staff. I am seeing the spirit every day. I am seeing a new Africa. And believe me, I've told you before, I said, if Nigeria doesn't change in the next 10 years of me, if I arrive in Nigeria today, can that day, between that day and five years, and maximum to 10 years, if that country doesn't become a respected country, count me out. Say I'm not a man of God. In fact, you, you can go, bring this video out. Bring this video out and say, you say you are not a man of God, then you are not a man of God. If Nigeria does not transform within ten, five to ten years of my being there, maximum ten years. And people are saying, but how can you talk like that? Great men of God are already there. You know, politicians are there. Why are you saying it's you? It's true you, God, will do that. <laughs> I have already done it here in Ukraine. And, and But it's not because of what I have done. It's not just my staff and my rod that comfort me. But I am looking in the spirit. I am seeing in the spirit. If what I see cannot be denied. What I see cannot be denied. And I'm walking towards it. So I'm not just seeing a new Africa in front in the invisible realm. But I am work, I am producing the substance today. I am producing the, 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 the evidence already by what I do every day. I've done this before. You know, when I started my ministry, I actually started my ministry. Uh, I, oh, I actually started my ministry in Belarus. And in Belarus, uh, in Belarus, when I started the, uh, the church, you know, you don't even, people don't even know me. You know, I rejected, I started one church in Belarus. I helped start one church. Then I helped start another. Then I helped start another. Three churches that were started. The first one, God told me, give it out. 
The second one, God told me, you will not be the pastor here. The third one, we were just starting it. God said, leave the country. And I was so broken. I was saying, how can I be spending my life to start to, to, to give back to a church, one church, second church, third church, and you are telling me, give it out, give this one out, give this one out. Yeah, it, you know, it's so difficult. It's like a baby, a, a mother, a nursing mother that is giving out a child. You know, can you imagine yourself, you know, being pregnant for nine months and then you give birth to the child and the child is one, one month and God said, go and give that child to another baby and to another mother. And then you give birth again and God said, go and give that child to another one. And you give that again, God said, go and give that. I mean, that is like un unreasonable. And then God said, because of what I'm going to do with you in the future, if you are able to say no to these things in Belarus, in Minsk, if you are able to give them out, you will see something, I will do something for you. But I was not as mature today. I couldn't see with myself. I just believed God. But now I can see, you know, that time, you know, I just moved by faith and I moved to, Bel I left Belarus and Kiev and Minsk and moved to Ukraine. Today, nobody even knows the names of those churches. No, not nobody, but the whole world don't, don't know the name of those churches that I left. Even though they are still, they are still existing and they are doing well. One of them is one of the uh, biggest churches in Belarus. But even the biggest church in that Belarus, it means people don't know what it means. What is the name of the church or who is the pastor? But that is what I left. If I had not left it, people wouldn't have known what I'm doing. They wouldn't have known me by what I'm doing. There. But that time, it was like my greatest achievement. It was like I will never have an opportunity like this again. That is always what you think. But that's why you need faith to reject the good for the better. That is why you need faith to reject the better for the best. That's why you need to, open, to learn to open your spiritual eyes, to learn to see into the invisible realm, and to be able to walk towards it. That is what it means by faith. Because that time, when I wanted to leave Belarus, you know what? I said, no, this is not God talking to me. I fasted for two weeks. I was fasting and praying. I said, no, this cannot be God. I got all my teams together. They fasted together with me for two months. We were fasting and God should stop it. No, it's not possible. How can somebody who labor so much and God will say, give it out? And then, uh, you know, I was doing night VG. Every week I was doing two night VG all by myself just to pray God to, to change his mind and say, ah, this cannot be you. This cannot be you. But that is what God... So God left me, but when I left, you know, there is a season... There is a period when you let go of the good, when you say no to the good that you have. There is a period when you are like empty, when you don't have anything. So when I left Belarus, in, I came to Ukraine, there was nothing. There was nothing. I didn't have anything. I, didn't, I was such a popular person, this person that is a pastor, having this church. But now I didn't have anything. So you must survive that period of indecisiveness and you must begin to create and to begin to write down and to begin to plan and to begin to build in yourself a, a you know a, a future that you are planning to see. You must begin to add value to yourself, to convert your time into added value and begin to you know get yourself ready, prepare yourself for the future until you begin to see the future clearly of what God wants you to do. In fact, after that, I was saying, God, I will never start another church again. You know, I, I, I didn't want to start any church again. I've started three, and God said, give it all out. So I didn't even want to start any church again. I just wanted to be a Christian and preaching, maybe like a freelance preacher. Just like I'm feeling now about going to Nigeria. I don't feel like going to start a church in Nigeria. And I, I said, for, for me to start a church in Nigeria, God has to speak to me. I don't like to start a church in Nigeria. I just want to go and do national transformation. But I don't know. If God says it, I will do it anyway. But if he doesn't say it, I will do my national transformation. But nevertheless, I already have a picture of what I have. I'm leaving Ukraine and people are saying, how can you live here? How can you, you know, and a lot of reproach. People are coming to me with all kinds of stories. Even in Ukraine here, people, you know, are coming with all kinds kind of accusation with all kind of but you must be able to suffer reproach you must be able to suffer reproach for you to see a greater future you see if moses had not suffered that reproach if moses had not embraced and rejected the good he would not have become the moses we all know today even the pharaoh that was there who knows the name of that pharaoh now nobody knows the name of that pharaoh nobody knows the name of the people who live in the generation only moses and aaron the people that obeyed god that risked everything that said no to comfort that said 
no to blessing, that said no to inheritance, that said no to palace, that said no to the, to the, to the throne. Only people were able to say no to all those things that were able to reject uh, the goodies and embrace the reproach, embrace the shame, embrace the persecution, embrace because he had to run away for his life. They wanted to kill him. The shame was too much. The country, it became a, from being a prince, prince, it became a disgrace. The whole country was looking for it. It became a fugitive. He had to run away for his life. He had to become a refugee. He had to endure all those reproach. But he said he preferred to endure reproach but to rather see as God sees. To rather align himself with what God sees and to align himself with what God wants to do. But I tell you, I mean, and now, you know, and I tell you what, I, t I tell you something, that by faith, I, I dare to declare today that the things I would do, just like when I left Belarus, you know, nobody knows Belarus anymore. Even my name is even more important, it's even more popular than the name of that country, Belarus itself. And I would have been captivated. I would have been. I would have been caged. I would have remained small. because you cannot be greater than the name of the, the country where you are. So you know, for me to be greater, God needed to take me from Belarus to to Ukraine. And now nobody even remembers Belarus or the name of the church there. I became. He made me greater because faith. When you follow faith, you get more. You become greater than what you have lost. Even in death, you become greater. So the same thing will happen in, in, in just like you people know Embassy of God, Ukraine now, and you don't know anything about Belarus, the same thing. By the time I start in Africa, by the time I'm back in Africa, it will be as if I never lived in Ukraine. It will be, it's be as if I never did anything in Ukraine at all. It will be as if all these things that you people are celebrating now, as if they are nothing. Why? Because I know how God works. For Moses to become a deliverer and to be to be recorded in the annals of history for time and eternity, he needed to sacrifice that throne. He needed to sacrifice that palace. He needed to embrace all the reproach. You see, there are some blessings that cannot come to you without reproach. There are some blessings. So if you are running away from re reproach, you are running for you from destiny. If you are running away from your re from reproach, you are running away from your from your blessing. There are some blessings. There are some elevation that will ne you will never see without reproach. There are some elevation that you will never see without lies, without false allegation, without you know, without disgrace, without pain, without rejection. You know, there are some things that are recorded for you. You look at people the God. God has used in the uh, in the Bible. Look at Joseph. Look at the reproach that he needed to suffer. You know, but he went through it by faith, and the faith, you know, made him who he became. I mean, look at Daniel. Look at the reproach he needed to suffer. Look at David. Look at the reproach he needed to suffer. Look at you know, uh, Paul. Look at the reproach he had to suffer. Even among the brethren. Look at the reproach he had to suffer. Look at Jesus. Look at the reproach Jesus had to suffer. Look at you know Samuel. Look at the reproach he had to suffer. Look at any man of God that God uh, that is being celebrated right now all over the world. Any man of God that is in the Bible. Any story that you see in the Bible, they all add faith for reproach. And we are the ones who don't talk about this faith. We don't talk about this faith for reproach. We don't talk about this faith for, for shame. We don't talk about the faith for, for, for disgrace. We don't talk about it. And you know, you must have this faith. This is another level of faith. Faith for disgrace, faith for reproach, faith for shame. When you are able to embrace this kind of faith, this level of faith, when you are able to, you know, to, to, to move in this level of faith, that is when you are recorded in the annals of history. That's how your name is recorded. That is how you cement your legacy in time and eternity. That is how you bring heavens to, to become more real than the things of the earth. That is why you must attach yourself now more to the things of the spirit, more to the truth of God, more to the things of, that are invisible now. You must begin to live for the things that are not seen. And you must make those things that are not seen stronger, more visible than the things that are seen. You must begin to see things in the spirit and be more committed to those things and be more dedicated to those things that are not seen than the things that you are seeing around yourself. You must align yourself with the invisible realm, with the realities of the spirit and begin to walk them out to bring them to, this, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the physical realm. That is a greater victory. And so when you are more aligned with the realities of God, 
God, with the realities of what God is showing you in the spirit, you will discover that you will be able to close your eyes at shame. You will be able to close your eyes at 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 at, at reproach. You will be able to close your eyes at at persecution. You will be able to close your eyes at blessing. You will be able to say no and reject all the goodies of life just to, for you to be able to align yourself with what God has called you to do. Well, what time is it? Let me check the time. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> time is going so fast. Huh? Time is going so fast. Well, if you have not, if you need a copy of this message, you need to go look for your share button. There's a button, share button under your video or around your video there on your timeline. Share of this. You can share this message. If you share this video, it will automatically come to your to your platform. Then you'll be able to watch it because I think this is the kind of message that you need to watch by yourself and for yourself over and over again. You need to build your faith against reproach. You need to build your faith against rejection. You need to build your faith against you know good things to be able to say no. You need to build your faith to have the ability to say no to the goodies of life. You need to be able to build that kind of faith that will see afar off and will live for the things ahead rather than the things at, in the back. So that's what that scripture tells us. That's what that scripture tells us. You know, you know that scripture, uh, let me finish it up right now. That scripture says, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of uh, Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of saints. Saying, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Why? How was he able to do that? Because he looked forward to the reward. You know, he was seeing forward. He was seeing something, a greater reward in the spirit. He was seeing, and the things that are, in, that are not visible in the spirit, they are much more real. They are much more real than the things that are visible. Well, my time is up, you guys. I think it's time now to go. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you tonight. Blessings.